Okay, so today is December 6, 2011. We're on lesson 6.3. We're going to investigate the sine function, which is this. This is our parent function for everything we're going to be doing in this chapter. What we're going to do is we're going to make a chart, and we're going to go through all the major rotations of the sine wave. Okay? So we're going to put a chart on our page. So... Your equation is f at x is equal to sine x. So all right, these are all of our x values. We're going to go from 0 to 360. I want you to plug those in for our x. So if, for instance, the very first one, I would have 0. The function of sine is 0. So our height is 0 at that point. When I do 30, sine 0 0.5. I want you guys to fill out this chart all the way to 360 degrees. So after you filled out this chart, hopefully these are the answers you got for your height. Each of these we're going to use as a coordinate. Okay? So each of these will be a coordinate we're going to plot on a graph. So what's going to be measured on this graph is our x-axis we're going to measure in degrees, okay, which is a little different from what we're used to. We'll measure it in degrees. And we're going to go from at least 0 to 360 degrees. That's the range we're going to need. And our height goes from the highest point, a max of 1, to a lowest point of minimum of 1. So we're going to make a chart right now on the next page. So according to our coordinates on the other page, this is how a sine wave looks, the original sine wave. When we were at 0 in our degrees, remember this is our x and y. Our x is me measured in degrees. Our y will just be centimeters in terms of a difference. So, the very first coordinate we had was 0 and 0. At 30 degrees, how high were we? 0 0.5. 0 0.5. At 60, we were... 0.875. At 90, we are at 1. For 120, we get 0 0.87. At 150, we're at 0 0.5. 180, we're at 0. And the pattern continues. Halfway there, 0.87, 1, 0.87. 0.5, 0. So, what we're getting is this would be considered one full rotation of a sine wave. So, this actually ranged from 0 to 360, okay? And what's going to continue, I want you guys to find out what happens when we go 30 degrees past 360. So, 390 390 sine, we're back at, why are you writing like that? Should have written 0 0.5 as a rounded. So, 0 0.5, in other words, we're continuing this pattern. So the pattern of this wave, it goes up to 1, comes down to negative 1, and back, okay? So this would be the periodic, the period of this function. It ranges from 0 to 360 degrees. It has a peak of 1, trough of negative 1, okay? And it continues on this way. So, the reason this is one period, remember, in order to complete a period, we have to get to the same spot. Now, throughout this wave, we get to that same spot almost three times. So, we checked the one before. When we are approaching this, and actually I want you guys to use some logic here. If I was to continue this wave, would it come back up or would it go down? It would be going down. Okay? So as we approach it, we are heading upwards as we get to this point. Now when we get to zero again, we're no longer heading upwards. We're heading down. So that's not a complete period. We have to approach the same spot in the same way. So we're heading up, coming up here. And we're heading up, coming up this way. So we know that from 0 to 360 is a complete period of the function. So 
If we were to continue this, this would be negative 30, negative 60. What do you think our next y coordinate is going to be at negative 30? Negative 0 0.5, that's right. What about negative 60? Yeah, and negative 90? 1. Okay. So this is a wave that continues from the negative all the way to the positive and on forever. It's a continuous pattern. So what I'm going to do is we're going to make another chart here where we've zoomed out a little so we get an idea of how many cycles we have. Okay, so what I'm doing now is we're going to draw a same sine wave on a graph that has a little bit more of a bigger picture. Okay, instead of going up by 30, I've decided to go up by 90. Now the function still acts the same. There are major key points we have to write in. At 0, our height is 0. What was our height at 90? 1. one. At 180? 0. Good. At 270? 360? No. And we continue this pattern. Okay? Negative 450. So if you notice our wave, So, we've gone in the positive direction, now we're going to be intuitive and think what would the pattern be backwards. At negative 90, we'll be at negative 180, negative 270. Good. And it continues. So. What we've done here is we've drawn a bigger picture of the sine function. It's the exact same numbers. We've just essentially zoomed out, you could say, so we can see how many different periods we pass. Now, this is the important part. We do know that a period lasts from 0 to 360. We discovered that in the last one. Okay? And the reason this is is because we started at 0, and as we approached 0, we were heading in an upwards direction. We were going left to right. When we got to 0 again at 360, we were again heading upwards. So one period is 360 degrees. Anything, anyone else know what else is 360 degrees? A circle. Okay? So a circle essentially shows us the sine wave. If we were to think of splitting a circle, okay? If we split a circle, let's talk about this. Let's say we start over here. We head up to 90. We're going to say that this circle reaches a height of 1, and it goes down to negative 1. As we pass 90 degrees, this would be a 90 degree angle, as we got over here, we'd be at 180 degrees, where we started, which is 0. As they come back down, this angle would be 270 degrees now. 3 quarters of a circle, we're at negative 1, which makes sense with the sign. And finally, as we come back up, this would be 360 degrees, and we're back at zero. If we wanted to do, figure out the cycles as it goes on, we can continuously just keep drawing circles, and we'll get back to those same points over and over and over again. Okay, so what we'll do is we're going to talk about a period referring to a circle this time. So remember with the sign, I said we had to get back to the same point and approach it in the same way. In a circle, it's the same idea. Now, we start at, we'll say, the y value of 0, and we come up and come back down. But we haven't completed a cycle yet. Okay? In order to complete a full cycle, we have to pass 360 degrees. That's when we actually get back to the same point in the same way. We're heading upwards as we get to this point, 0. Just the cycle of the sine wave is 360. Now, now that we have a sine wave, we got to point out some of the major points that we learned yesterday. Remember we had all of these definitions on the side. These definitions are all very important. We had a peak and a trough of 1. We'd already figured that out in the previous one. And we also know that our period ranged from 0 to 360 degrees. So we have two major parts of this. We're going to write these down for the sine wave, since this is our original one. Our peak is 1, trough is negative 1, the period is 360 degrees, like drawing a circle, okay? Equation of the axis, equation of 
equation of the axis is a horizontal line that splits our periodic function right down the middle. Oh, okay? I know it is. So in other words, what would it equal? Um, no? No. It's on the y-axis. What would split right down the middle of our y-axis? Zero. Zero, that's right. So our equation of the axis would be at y equals zero, okay, for a normal sine function. We know that y equals zero is the equation of the axis. I'm going to show you a little formula to solve it. We know that is y equals zero. Now, we can use a formula to solve the equation of the axis, okay? What you do is you use the peak and the trough. You add them together and divide by two. So we're going to say equation of axis, we're going to call it EOA, is equal to the peak plus the trough divided by 2. Now in our case, our peak was 1, our trough was negative 1, and we divided by 2. We got 0 divided by 2 is 0. So this is our equation of the axis, peak plus trough divided by 2. That will always show us the equation of the axis, even if the function has been shifted up, down, left, right. Use this formula. Always works to find the equation of the axis. Okay, a couple other major points we got to talk about. We need to know the amplitude. And if you remember, the amplitude was the distance from the equation of the axis to either the peak or the trough. So, our amplitude in these questions. If I start at the equation of the axis and I draw a line to the peak, how far have I traveled? One, in terms of height. And same with going to the trough, how far did I travel? One, that's right. Okay, so our amplitude in this case is one. It's the distance from the equation of the axis to the highest or lowest point. So our amplitude is equal to 1. Now, there is a way to always find amplitude, and I'll show you an equation, but it's actually usually easiest to look at it. We're going to talk about domain and range, and then from the range we can always find the amplitude. So, domain. That's not an M. Domain of this function. How would I represent the domain of this function if it technically goes on forever? That's it. Okay. We have our domain. Let's talk about our range. Y is element of all real numbers between what numbers? That's right. Such that y is greater than and equal to negative 1 and less than and equal to the number 1. Okay? So, our range was between negative 1 and 1. That's how we draw the range of this function. So these are all the major ideas to it. The last thing is they talk about five key points, okay, on one of these graphs. I'm going to highlight the key points for you. They want you to know these coordinates because they will help you when drawing the graph. The key coordinates are here, 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 and here. So the five key coordinates in a sine graph are 0 and 0, 90 and 1, 1, 80, 180 and 0, 270, negative 1, and I guess we'll have to do the last one up here, 360 and 0. Okay. I've highlighted all of them. These are your key points that have been highlighted. Anytime we ask for key points, it's essentially the peaks, troughs, and anytime it hits the equation of the axis on any periodic function. Okay? So if you notice, we hit the equation of the axis three times. Those are our y values of 0. 
We hit the peak once, and we hit a trough once. Those are the five key points to our sine function. Look at 